Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Analysis of fixed bed adsorber. In this video course, you will learn features of fixed bed adsorber, adsorption wave front, equilibrium zone and mass transfer zone, breakthrough curve and its significance in bed sizing, static and dynamic adsorption capacity. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. The gas or liquid drying as well as purification by adsorption is usually carried out in fixed bed adsorption columns in industries. A single tower with a given mass of adsorbent will get saturated once its useful capacity is reached and the bed can no longer absorb and bed operation has to be stopped for regeneration. For continuous operation of the plant, typically a two-bed system is installed so that the system work on a time-based cycle, thereby meeting the plant requirement of continuous operation. What is a fixed bed adsorber? What are its internals? What are the design features? Let us move on to find out. Features of drying tower and tower internals. Essentially, fixed bed adsorption tower has a fixed bed of molecular sieve or other adsorbent supported on a grid plate. To avoid the molecular sieve particles to fall through the grid opening, a screen is placed over the grid and a large size inert balls of 4 inches in height are filled over the screen. Over the inert ball layer, the molecular sieve is loaded. Similarly, at the top surface of the bit, a layer of inner ball is placed. To restrain the movement of the bit, a hold down grid with a screen is fixed at the top. The design parameter for the bit are the diameter of the tower, the length of the bit, and the cycle time for bit changeover. Inlet and outlet gas distributors. How the gas is admitted to the bed is an important aspect of our internal design. Poor gas distribution of the inlet and outlet of the adsorbent bed can cause channeling, adsorbent damage. The tower is provided with inlet gas distributor designed for radial discharge. Radial discharge of gas from distributors will prevent direct impingement on the adsorbent particles. Slotted pipe wrapped with wire mesh screen is usually used so that the gas exits readily into the vessel. Wide space. Wide space of 18 to 24 inches is recommended over the bed surface. Neither gas to be dehydrated or nor the regeneration gas should impinge directly on the bed. Analysis of fixed bed adsorber. The adsorption rates in a fixed bed dynamic systems can be analyzed in two ways. Mass transfer coefficient approach, mass transfer zone concept. Mass transfer coefficient provide an insight into the mechanism by which adsorption occurs, but it can be difficult to determine and tedious to use in design calculation. The mass transfer zone concept provides a simple and effective method for considering rate phenomena in fixed bed adsorption system design. In the mass transfer zone concept, a total resistance to mass transfer is expressed in terms of an unused bed adsorbent, which must be added to the adsorbent equilibrium requirement. Mass transfer zone is where the dynamic adsorption takes place. The mass transfer zone can be defined as the length it takes the adsorbent to bring the impurities from the initial concentration 
to the final specification. This figure illustrates the mass transfer zone concept. During dynamic adsorption operation, the fixed bed has three zones. As the gas comes into contact with the fresh or regenerated bed, the bed gets saturated immediately and the concentration of the gas drops from C0 to Cs, which is the outlet specification concentration. And this part of the bed is called saturated bed and is said to be in equilibrium with the inlet gas concentration of the adsorbate and the zone is called equilibrium zone EZ. At the exit end of the bed, the treated gas is in equilibrium with the regenerated or unused bed. In between the EZ and bed outlet, there is a zone where mass transfer is taking place and the gas concentration is falling from inlet concentration CO to the specified outlet concentration CS. This zone is called mass transfer zone MTEZ. During the operation phase, the EZ in red color extends downward and the MTEZ moves forward and slowly reduces the fresh or unused adsorbent area. This is a plot of concentration versus length of the bed. In the saturation zone, the bed is loaded to equilibrium. No mass transfer takes place as the gas flows through the zone. In MTZ, concentration drops from CO to CS. The S-shaped wave in a CL plot is a CL mass transfer wave or front. Breakthrough curve. In this figure, the concentration of sorbate at bed outlet is plotted versus time. You can understand how the movement of the adsorption wave front as the adsorption proceeds affect the bed concentration of the adsorbate. At the inlet end of the bed, the concentration of adsorbable component is CO. The adsorbate loading is equilibrium loading corresponding to concentration of the sorbate component CO in the feed. At time T1, at the effluent end of the bed, the sorbate concentration is less than the effluent specific concentration CS and the sorbate loading would be essentially same as the unused bed. In some intermediate zone, the adsorbate loading changes from saturation value to the initial adsorbate loading. It is in this zone that the sorbable component is being transferred from bulk fluid to the sorbate phase and the concentration falls from CO to CS. As the adsorption continues, mass transfer wave moves through the bit in a steady state fashion at uniform velocity. Breakthrough occurs when the mass transfer wave just reaches the effluent end of the bed. At time T3 is equal to Tb, the sorbate concentration increases above Cs, which is the effluent specification concentration value. And it can be said that the breakthrough has occurred. The time at which the breakthrough occurs is called breakthrough time and is designated as Tb. At time T4, all of the adsorbents in the bed is at equilibrium with the concentration of the sorbable component in the feed CO. That is, the total bed is said to be in equilibrium or saturated condition. The bed has lost its adsorption capacity. Usually, a breakthrough composition is said to be the maximum amount of adsorbate that can be acceptably allowed to leave in the gas, typically something between 1 to 5% of the inlet concentration. The adsorption temporary design to be switched to regeneration when this breakthrough composition is reached. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your spec eLearn channel is one-stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career-oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now.
the length of the mass transfer zone depends on the adsorbent kinetic that is the rate of adsorption the fluid superficial velocity types of adsorbent and pore structure and distribution the gas inlet and outlet concentrations the rate of transfer of adsorbate from the gas to the adsorbent is an important factor that influences the mass transfer zone a shallow mass transfer zone indicates a good adsorbent utilization the length of the mass transfer zone determines the minimum depth of the adsorbent bit the larger the accessible surface the shorter the mass transfer zone why is the mass transfer wave s shaped it is evidence of resistance to mass transfer the greater the resistance the longer is the wave as mass transfer resistance decreases the wave becomes shorter in the ultimate ideal case the curve becomes vertical straight line or zero length this ideal mass transfer wave is called stoichiometric wave or front such a bed is comprised solely of equilibrium zone and unused bed because the length of the mass transfer zone is zero so a bed with a stoichiometric wave front has an equilibrium zone and unused bed how does the breakthrough occurs under ideal conditions the concentration of the adsorbable component in the effluent will change instantaneously from specification to the inlet value it is called stoichiometric breakthrough the length of the bed lb and weight of the bed wb or lb equal to les plus lub and wb equal to wvs plus wub where les is the length of equilibrium section lub is the length of unused bed wvs the weight of adsorbent in equilibrium section wub the weight of adsorbent in unused bed types of breakthrough curves the length of the mass transfer zone and the time of appearance of the breakthrough curve influence greatly the design and operating characteristics of fixed bed adsorber for a given application breakthrough curves gives an indication of how good or bad the chosen adsorbent for the given application this figure illustrates the different types of breakthrough curves possible with adsorbents curve a is perfect or ideal or stoichiometric breakthrough curve the breakthrough is instantaneous and the outlet concentration increases and equals the inlet concentration curve b represent practically attainable good breakthrough curve with this curve the outlet concentration of the sorbate remains below the specification value for long time until the breakthrough occurs the breakthrough is reasonably steep and the outlet concentration reaches that of the inlet quickly curve b is representative of the breakthrough curves that are typically experienced in the industries curve c represents much poor breakthrough curves initially the outlet concentration remains below the specification value for some time the breakthrough commences after this period follows a steep curve initially and proceeds slowly to reach the inlet concentration curve d is very poor curve as seen in the figure the breakthrough occurs rather immediately after the fresh bed comes into adsorption operation and progresses gradually to reach the inlet concentration static and dynamic adsorption adsorption data sheets usually mention the adsorption capacity at certain water concentration partial pressure or relative humidity 
at certain temperature. These values obtained by leaving the adsorbent for several days under controlled conditions in contact with the gas or liquid without gas or liquid flow and allowing it to reach equilibrium and measuring the weight after equilibrium has reached. The value obtained is the static adsorption capacity. The water adsorbed on the adsorbent is in equilibrium with the water partial pressure or concentration in the gas phase. Industrial adsorption units, the dynamic or overall adsorption capacity is more important because it involves flow through the bed. Its value can be obtained by dividing the amount of water adsorbed on adsorbent bed by the quantity of the adsorbent bed. Its value depends on the design and hence it is different for different units. It is typically 40 to 70 percent of static adsorption capacity. Why there is a difference between static and dynamic adsorption capacity? The dynamic adsorption capacity takes into account only that part of the bed which is saturated. That means it takes into account only that quantity of adsorbent that is adsorbed in the equilibrium zone. The empty Z where the gas is dried to the specification is only the partially saturated and the unused bed has no adsorbent adsorbed on it. Typical values of dynamic adsorption capacity in the case of a typical actuated alumina for gas drying would be in the range of 29% that is gram per 100 gram of adsorbent at 25 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 80%. The dynamic adsorption capacity of the same adsorbent at the same temperature will be 7% at relative humidity of 10%. At lower relative humidity, the adsorption capacity is lower. That is one of the disadvantages of activated alumina for gas drying at low relative humidity because the bed needs large volume of adsorbent for the same quantity of water removal. What is the useful adsorption capacity? In practical and dynamic situations, loading of water on adsorbent are much less than static or equilibrium loadings as per isotherms due to residual loadings after previous regeneration, degradation of adsorbent due to aging, coking, etc., heat of adsorption effects, co-adsorption and displacement desorption, length of mass transfer zone. Can we then take the dynamic adsorption capacity for design of adsorption towers? While designing adsorption towers, the dynamic capacity is not cons considered at 100% of its value. Depending on the nature of the gas streams to be treated, taking into account the above listed factors and past experience with similar units running in the industry, useful capacities are arrived at for design considerations. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.